Some of you have probably seen my predictions for BYD this year and in 2025. This year, I'm saying BYD will deliver 1.6 million electric cars and become one of the world's largest, most powerful vehicle companies, period. Now, you probably think, well, why are you saying this? I mean, what are BYD even doing? Who even are these guys? I mean, well, I should point out, currently they are building a 100 gigawatt hour battery factory. That is in addition to the other seven battery factories they have. In addition to that, they are, well, almost halfway through building one of the world's largest car factories. I think it's safe to call it a gigafactory to build hundreds of thousands, if not millions of EVs. Here are the details. And here is why right now BYD stock is a bargain. Hello, my friends. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to have you here on the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. I've been blabbing on about BYD for a long time. I've actually ordered a BYD electric car. If you want to see me going through the ordering process, I'll put a link in the description below. I've told you all about how BYD will become one of the world's largest car makers by 2030. And I've offered a fair bit of proof and evidence to back up why that is. Vertical integration, LFP batteries. I mean, nickel prices soaring. Ah, everyone panics. Guess what? BYD says, <laughs> yeah, we don't care. We don't use nickel. We don't need it. We don't use cobalt. We don't need it. We make our own batteries. We don't have to rely on you other battery manufacturers. We make almost everything that goes into the car ourselves, our own motors, our own controllers, our own, our own chips, our own chips. Name me another car company in the world that makes their own chips. You can't. Name me another car company in the world that mass manufactures LFP batteries. You can't. It doesn't exist. BYD is the only one doing it. And that is why they were able to ramp their electric vehicle sales up last year in a way that Legacy Auto can only dream of. And, you know, of course, many of you are fans of GM, many of you are fans of Ford, many of you are fans of Toyota and Volkswagen, and many of you make optimistic predictions about what those car companies will do. And I have to say they're very optimistic and, you know, I hope they play out. But um, let's be fair here. It hasn't happened yet. BYD, though, look at their year. Look at their 2021 year. I'll put a video, a link in the description below to their year of 2021, to what they achieved in that year. And look at what they're actually doing. Not what they're saying they'll be doing, what they're actually doing. And look at the fact, I mean, they realistically, what they did is they announced they're going to build a battery factory, right? They bought the land within two weeks. Then they started production. They started building the factory within a month. That just doesn't happen in any other country where factories are being built for cars anywhere else in the world. It doesn't happen in Europe. It doesn't happen in the US. And what do you think the Chinese government are going to say to BYD when that factory is finished? Are they going to say, oh, no, 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 we've got to wait to get 75 permits completed and, and there's going to be, um, you know, environmental groups that will protest and we're going to have to take them. To, that's going to have to go to court. We have to have discussions about that. And It doesn't happen. They're going to say, BYD, go, 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 go. We want you to take over. We, we want you to start exporting. Quick, 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 quick. Ramp production, ramp production, ramp production, ramp production. And that's exactly what they're doing. A 100 gigawatt hour battery factory, in addition to their existing battery factories where they're already ramping production. This is kind of scary when you think about it. It's scary to think that there is just no possible mathematical financial way that Legacy Auto can compete on price with BYD. It's scary to think of just how far ahead they are in terms of vertical integration compared to Legacy Auto. It's scary to think this because really, this is not just BYD, this is China and they're coming. Construction of BYD's Gigafactory began on August the 28th last year and the main plant has almost been finished and they're starting to install car manufacturing equipment. Now, as far as I know, mainstream media hasn't even reported on the existence of one of the world's largest, probably the world's third largest electric car factory. Uh, and I, uh, of course, only behind Tesla. They've never even spoken about it, even once. That's kind of what makes this scary. It's creeping up. It's like a horror movie. I mean, it's good for people who want an electric car. Not so good for the West in terms of losing their car industries. Because, I mean, we're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not trillions of dollars these industries represent. So what does this mean? Well, behind BYD's rapid growth in electric vehicle production and sales and delivery is a continued increase in its production capacity. They're not slowing down at all. BYD's $2.4 US billion plant in Hefei, China, is expected to see its first new vehicle 
roll off the line in two months, in June. That's less than a year after construction began, according to an article posted today on the government's website in that area. Now, the project was signed on July 9th of last year, and construction began the following month in August. Wow, they don't wait around. The main plant has been largely roofed, and some of the factories have already started installing equipment. Now, the total investment of the project is RMB 15 billion, and the first phase can achieve an annual output value of more than RMB 50 billion after reaching full production capacity, which is expected to drive the total output value of the upstream and downstream industrial chains to RMB $100 billion. Now, BYD is reported to be able to achieve full production of the production lines being installed within three months of it opening officially, which will be in June. So in other words, in two months from now, they'll start actually have cars running down the production line. In a further three months from then, they'll have full production capacity. And one other scary little thing I should point out here is that there's a bit of collusion going on. Well, that's what we'd call it in the West. Apparently, BYD CEO Wang Shanfu met with the CEO of NEO, and he also met with the CEO of Xpeng. Now, apparently, BYD and Xpeng and BYD and NEO have some sort of deals going on. They're going to work together. They're going to work together to help to reduce their costs, to help to basically help each other. Now, where do you hear of this happening? I heard of this happening once, right? In the US, apparently General Motors and Ford worked together on manufacturing a transmission. It was like a 10-speed transmission or something. And everyone thought it was this amazing thing. Ford and General Motors were working together on a transmission. Well, guess what? We don't even need transmissions anymore. So in other words, Ford and General Motors, only a few years ago, spent billions of dollars on a transmission that we now no longer need. And NEO, Xpeng, and BYD are manufacturing the cheapest cars on the planet, which also happen to be pretty damn impressive. And they're working together to reduce prices across the entire supply chain. That is something that I don't think Legacy Auto in the West is prepared to compete with. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Am I being too dramatic here? Am I being, am I exaggerating? I mean, if you've been watching this channel, if you've seen the more than 1,000 videos that I've made over the last seven or eight months, you probably get a good idea on what's about to happen. But I don't think even we really fully understand what's going on there. Because if you think about it, there was 180,000 new businesses that sprang up in China over the last 12 months to support this incredible EV revolution that's going on in China. 180,000 new businesses. The previous year before that, there was more than 100,000 as well. This is what we're dealing with. And I'm not really sure if we're really ready for what's about to come.